Hey guys, also welcome to another video of mine. It's Kamal Double A. Welcome to another video of mine. Now, this video is regarding the Luis Campos video. So basically, Chelsea have officially made contact. But before I do get into things, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new around here. And when you do subscribe, make sure you smash that notification bell so you're notified every time I do upload. And comment down below your thoughts and opinions on the video and also your thoughts and opinions on Luis Campos potentially being our new sporting director for the long term, for the long term future, long, the longevity. Uh, but yeah, obviously um, yesterday the news broke, obviously I was unable to make the video yesterday, yesterday the news broke that uh, Chelsea have officially made contact with Lewis Campos. Now, if you do guys have any context behind this, we were actually in for him in the summer. We uh, we did go in for him in the summer, however, the deal fell through because, let's be real, Chelsea have not had a sporting director for over a year now. Obviously, Michael Amanalo was the, um, the sporting director back in uh, November 2017. He then left because of the, the power struggle between Antonio Conte and uh, Moreno Gran of Skyer. So obviously he left, he went to Monaco. He's now officially been sacked by Monaco. Now the, uh, the, the ideal proposition was that Michael Abinalo went to um, Monaco and then obviously, um, I can't even get the words out of my mouth, Luis Campos did come to Chelsea. Now I was all for this deal. My dream was at the time was the Luis Campos and Jardim. Uh, link up because that link up 2017. Do you remember that Monaco team? Kylian Mbappe, Bernardo Silva, Bakayoko, Fabinho, uh, Sidibe, Falcao, all the all that top down. Thomas Lamar. That link up that was all due to Luis Campos find those hidden gems and he'd be perfect. Especially with this transfer ban. In my opinion, Luis Campos would be the best appointment that Chelsea can make in this current moment in time. I've wanted him for time. He's the main sporting director that I've wanted for ages. Obviously, we have a massive problem with youth. The way that the, the way that we run the youth, obviously, we integrate youth poorly. We don't integrate, we don't, we don't use the youth properly. We use the youth as a bit of a, we use the academy as a money-making machine. We obviously, we bring the academy up, we promise them dreams, we sell them dreams. They never make the first team. They then go out on loan for one year, two years, three years. They then gain a bit of experience, they get better, and then we sell them to a lower club for, a, I don't know, 10 million, 15 million. That's profit. We don't have every player. Currently, we have 42 players on loan. In my opinion, that is shocking. We are second highest in Europe for the amount of loan counts. We do have Atlanta as a first with 80. Don't, don't even question me how they've got that many, but... It just shows you how poorly run Chelsea are. If you have 42 candy players on loan, then there's something wrong. There's, there's a massive loophole that you know that needs to be needs to be fixed, basically. Because how can you have 42 players on loan, but then knowing that not even one of them is going to make the first team in the future? It's so obvious that the, the system is flawed, it's so outdated, and we do need a sporting director. It's clearly evident that since Michael Emanano left, we've been struggling so badly in the transfer policy. Our awful transfer policy is costing the team. Uh, we haven't got the Champions League for, if we don't get a Champions League season, that's two years running that we've got the Champions League. Before Moreno Grand Sky came, before we had a proper sporting director, your Peter Kenyans, your your, Roy, your Ron Gawleys, we were coming first, second, first, second. Worst case scenario, would come third in a season. Ever since Moreno Grand kind of Sky come, we've come first twice, we've come third twice, and the other times we've come 10th, 6th, 5th. Sixth. I mean, and this year we can even finish sixth or fifth. So the inconsistency is clearly evident that with Roman not really investing as he used to be, the self-sustainable model, and the fact that he's not even in the country, so he's not paying attention, leaving Marina Grand Sky with all the power because obviously he trusts Marina because of the oil business. She was his right-hand woman in the job, so now he trusts the club with all of her. However, she has zero footballing knowledge, as we all know, and a sporting director is desperately needed. That's why Lewis Campos, in my opinion, is the best appointment. Now, before I do again to further details about him but one thing I do need to mention I need to explain to you guys as to why the deal actually fell through in the summer obviously we were supposed to get him in the summer and uh, the reason why it did actually fall in the summer is because of Luis Campos's demands he wanted to completely revamp the youth he wanted to sell every single youth academy product and he wanted to completely revamp it he wanted 40 million pounds invested in the youth he wanted a brand new restructure he wants to restructure the whole club the way that the youth system and the academy works he wanted to completely restructure it he wanted a lot of money invested into it. he wanted new facilities etc and he wanted things his way and obviously we know that Marina Glasgow holds most of the power if Luis Campos does come I my issue is and my worry is that Luis Campos is gonna not have as much power and he's not gonna be able to have as much say to do what he wants and in my opinion that's a complete waste of time the power needs to be shared in my opinion Marina Glasgow needs to be dealing with, dealing with the finances because she's good with the money 
all the financial deals that she's brought through Hyundai, the, the 60 million Nike deal, uh, the Carabao Cup, the drink deal on our training kits. Um, so, you know, she's brought these fantastic deals that brought a lot of profit to our club. But when it comes to the footballing abilities, we need to leave it to Luis Campos. Now, last year, he made a famous quote saying Tottenham, it was at the time, obviously, Tottenham had the only, he was basically stressing the importance of fullbacks. And in this system, in this sorry system, in an attacking philosophy system, fullbacks are so keen. He's stressing that. He knows what he's on about. He's got that footballing knowledge. He's so good at youth. And it's obviously evident. We know he's good at youth. You've seen that Monaco 2017 team, which I just... Uh, earlier just mentioned he's been fantastic with that and uh it's only right that he gets the job in my opinion i think that we obviously need a sporting director we're desperate for it but luis campos is levels above what we had with michael Aminalo. and definitely for the longevity and the long-term future luis campos is perfect now the way he integrates you if we allow him the tools if we give him the resources we give him the time to change things up especially with the transfer ban coming we're going to have to rely heavily on the youth he's going to cherry pick those youth players that are perfect and ready made and good enough to go in the first team and then the rest is going to sell to make more profit and then he's going to completely restructure the club this club in my opinion needs desperate restructuring because i'll tell you why because this whole club like i mentioned in earlier videos is a complete tip is a complete mess and it's evident on the pitch with not been getting the results the manager's always to blame when it's not always the manager's fault look i'm not saying sorry is an angel he's made some mistakes but what I do need to mention is everyone blame the manager, but you know, letting the board escape, get a free pass once again. The board have been incompetent for the last few years, and it's about time that we start making correct decisions and we actually hire Lewis Campos. I need to ask you guys this. When was the last time we had a proper transfer window? 2015, when we signed Diego Costa. Sorry, 2014, when we signed Diego Costa, Cesc Fabregas, Felipe Luiz, Nemanja Matic. How long ago was that? Five bloody years. Five years. We've neglected this squad. We haven't bought the right amount of players because of the lack of football knowledge and the fact that we always prioritise profit over the the better of the team, we've always suffered that department. Your Zappa Costa signings, drink water. Pulisic, as good as he is, he was a profit signing. By buying Pulisic, the merchandise in America, we're going to make so much more. We're going to make double from what we paid for him. It's all about the money. It's all about the profit. And that way we do suffer. You know, this is why I don't really trust this board going forward. But by hiring Luis Campos, given the time, the resources, I believe that he can change the structure of this club and it's going to be better for the future of this club. I think that's the, that's the best way forward. Luis Campos has to be hired. There's no ifs, buts, what. He has to be hired because he's perfect for the future of this club. The way he's going to integrate the youth. Callum Hudson-Odoi. We won't be seeing more of your Mohamed Salahs, your Kevin De Bruyne, your Lukaku, who just let and escape for free. Like I said, the dream partnership for the future would be Jardim and Lewis Campos because what they did together, that partnership in Monaco, was phenomenal and incredible. And uh, I'm really hoping they can repeat it. Obviously, Chelsea have one of the best academies in the world by giving them the tools to allow to identify gems in other areas using bringing his scouting network. Because our scouting network, let's be real, is not very good these days. Allowing Lewis Campos to take control of everything. Allow him to complete footballing side to Lewis Campos to allow him to do his magic identify those gems and bring them up to the youth team and completely restructure the academy, I'm all for it. Give the guy whatever he needs. If he needs investment in the academy, then so be it. Give him the tools, give him the money, he needs it. That's just my touch on Luis Campos. I want you guys to leave me your thoughts on Luis Campos in the, in the conversation below. Do you think it's a right an appointment? Especially with this transfer ban coming up, obviously we're not going to, it's my, you know, it's probably clearly evident most likely that we're not going to be able to spend this summer. So therefore, we're going to have to rely on the youth by bringing Luis Campos. Obviously not this season because obviously we can't, we can't do much with him. He can't really do much with this squad. But next season, the following season, when the transfer ban does end, if he does have the power and we do get in the finances, he knows exactly who to buy to improve this first team, the correct fullbacks, the top players, world-class players, etc., to really elevate this team and take Chelsea at next level that we've always been aspiring to when this club you know, was first bought by Roman Abramovich. So hopefully, it, if we do hire Luis Campos, it's, it's a positive step in the right direction, in my opinion. We're looking for the future. We're looking for long-term. He is that perfect man. You look at what he's doing at Lille currently, how he's brought up Nicolas Pepe, how he's identifying those gems. Lille have been doing fantastic this season, sitting second or third in Liga. And so, you know, the man knows what he's doing. He's one of the best sporting directors in the market. And it's a complete no-brainer to, to sign, in my opinion. I think that... It's a sign that 100% needs to be made by the boards. And also, when we do hire him, we need to give the whole footballing side to him, give him the control. Like I said, the finances and the money, you can give the Marina Grand of Sky. She's perfect at that. But when it comes to football, where we've been lacking in the last five years, you can tell we've been suffering. The squad's been neglected. The squad's been suffering with a lack of, um, you know, correct signings. You look at our funds. It's not even we haven't got money. We've spent as much as City. But do you know what the key is? You can see the levels in difference. 
Uh, we haven't been signing correctly. Uh, it's been inefficient. We've been signing poor quality players. We've been too stingy in the market. We'd rather sign average players to gain as profit rather than players that actually, you know, make the system better than, and basically sign world-class players. We'd rather prioritise signing average players and make us profit rather than signing quality world-class players. And it's been the issue for the last five years. That's why Chelsea have been declining as a club. And like I said, the structure needs a complete change. It's a complete mess. That's why by bringing in Luis Campos, he can restructure this whole club and we can move forward in a positive direction. But that's just my thoughts and opinions on the Lewis Campbell situation. If you did, like I said, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new around here, and I'll see you guys for my next video. Peace.